Donga. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, beautiful people. It's me, Frank Donga, your number one job seeker, bringing you some undiluted hot gist this time of the day. I know you like gist. You like gist, just like me. <laughs> and the one you hear today may shock you. I promise you, this is the kind of gist that will affect your health. It will affect the health of your family. Yes, we are talking about our health today. Health matters. And I'm not alone here. There's an Obonge health expert. Today, we, together, we're going to be dropping gist on you. Wow! Just like that. As they hot. You know, I'm not alone. Who sponsored me is this gist? Now, Neil. Neil is powering this gist. So, wherever you are at home, at work, at sleep, eyes open. Come. Call your friends. Tell them to call their friends. Call your friends, your neighbors, your enemy. Let's listen to the gist together. I'm coming. Hello, Doc. With Frank Donga. Hello, Doc. You're listening to Hello, Doc. With Frank Donga. Now, what spot is similar to the kind of things that happens in our health? I repeat, what spot has similarities to the kind of things happening in our health or our body? If you said football or soccer, you are very correct. Why? Because we have attackers, we have defenders, we have midfielder, we have referee, everything. Just like our immune system defending us. Just like when you take medication to attack foreign bodies in your player. So all the players on the field, all the 11 players on that field, plus all the players in our immunity, in our health, how do they work together? Which one of them is the striker self? Which one of the things in our body is a midfielder? Which one is the defender? When, where, and how do we get all these players? And are they free? Talking about the things that make up the immunity in our body. If you miss one, what happens? I remember I told you I'm not alone today. There's an Obonga health expert today joining me on the show. And that guest is no other person but our own very own Dr. Anire Chima Oduko. She's a public health um, professional and she's also uh, an advocate for women and children's health. She conducts medical outreach screenings, health education, and other evidence-based public health strategies. She's an associate fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, and she's a member of the West African College of Medical Health Physicians. And uh, we, together, we're going to be going through all the things that have to do with immunization, or when do you take it, or which one do you take, or everything about immunization. That's what we're going to be discussing today. You're welcome, Doctor. Thank you for Doctor having Anirin. me. Great to be great to see you in the studio today. Yeah, great to have you. Good, good, good. So we're talking about immunization and our health. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, we said, I said it earlier, defender, attacker, all these things. What, why exactly do we need immunization? Okay, so um, immunization is a process whereby you make somebody who is susceptible to a disease resistant to that disease so it is a process of improving and increasing the immunity of somebody against a particular disease. So that's what immunization is. So that is like when you fortify yes. your field with defenders. So that <laughs> any match, as they play ball, enter your box 18, your defender, they defend you. Yes, mm. yes. I like your metaphor. She, <laughs> does immunization also attack when disease wants to come to you? Do they attack those things? No, what happens is because of the immunization, when the um, attackers, that's the disease mm. antigens, mm. want to come and attack you, your body, because it has been immunized, can now fort it has already fortified itself. So it can respond and fight against those. So it's like when their own striker wants to place ball mm -hmm. on the right corner of the, of the net. Mm -hmm. You have defenders. Defenders, yes. defenders just good there. They want and to play you this way. Yes, defend defend catcher. Us too. Okay, yes. correct. Nice Definitely. one, nice one. Mm -hmm. So that's what immunization is, Abby. Yes. Mm, it's okay. Now, why do we need to take all this immunization? Like, even how many or how often? Where do we start from? Okay. First and foremost, um, immunization, if you, if you notice, nowadays our lifespan generally is increasing. Um, before, before, long ago, people used to die a lot. Mm. Children used to reach their fifth birthdays. Um, you have a lot of, a lot of people give birth a lot, but you hear that the child has died. Mm. So that's because of a whole lot of childhood illnesses. So immunization is one of the revolutionary technologies that medicine has been able to contribute to our world that protects our health and helps us to live longer. So, um, so immunization is very important. Um, it protects from diseases that would have killed children and or killed people. So because we are immunized now, we don't fall um, 
ill from those illnesses. And even if we do fall ill, it might not be as serious as, as it would have been. Mm. So that's the importance of immunization. So we should um, immunize children from birth. So in Nigeria, um, we advocate that from birth, we start to immunize our children against diseases that are very common here in Nigeria. So some diseases that are common in Nigeria are tuberculosis. CB is very common and it can be spread um, by um, inhalation. When you inhale, when somebody just coughs or even talks or mm. sings, the person can release the uh, microbes into the air. And you, an innocent person, does not know, just breathing in. So we, even babies can, their parents can even give them the, mm. or anybody that comes to greet a baby. So from birth, we say that a child should be immunized with um, tubercul um, BCG, which is against tuberculosis. At birth also, we give, um, so there's an immunization schedule. Do you want me to go through that? Maybe? No, we're, we're coming there. Okay. I know I, I prepare for you so today. Yeah, right? so there, 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 about, there are a couple of diseases that are vaccine mm. preventable. Okay. That we should immunize ourselves against. Okay. So you want to tell us some of these diseases? Or yes. we tell, say it as we go along. Just tell us some of these diseases okay. and, and what, um, how, what they, how they affect us so that we can know okay. that we, the importance of... Okay. So I've, I've mentioned tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. What um, does that affect in the body? Okay. It affects the, it, okay, it affects the lungs primarily, but can affect every other part of the body. It can affect the brain when it's very severe. It can affect the brain. It can affect the, the bones. It can affect the spine. So tuberculosis is a disease that can actually affect every organ in the body. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and it's becoming more and more common now because of HIV. So more Ooh. people are coming down with tuberculosis and all that. Yes. Wow. So yeah, um, um, immunizations protect us against polio. So um, Nigeria was certified, was it in 2020? Free from wild polio um, virus. Uh, polio is a disease that affects the uh, muscles of children and now make them um, become crippled. You know, oh, not, right. yes. not able to walk, walk again. well. But yes. after a while, now the leg will come no, strong No, 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 it doesn't become, once it, ha it has happened, it has happened. Hell. So imagine, a child that was born hale and healthy and healthy becomes... Um, and most of our African cities, you know, they depend a lot of hustle and bustle. To survive, you need to be on yes, your feet, literally, yes, yes. literally on your feet. Yes. If the feet are not affected. Exactly. That's, so that's a disability that that child has to, has to, um, add to all the stresses of life. Chai. Yes, something you could have prevented. Mm. So we have hepatitis, hepatitis B. It's a, it's a serious disease now. Um, it's one of the causes of liver cancer mm. and all that. So hepatitis and it's vaccine preventable. From the hospital, we immunize first against tuberculosis mm. before you go home and Expose this child. So. Where did they, they, they give it on? Is it in the hand or the Yeah, they give it in the in the, in the, in, the hmm? in the arm, the upper arm. Okay. In the upper arm, um, intradermally. Don't worry, that's a bit, that's a bit, but they give it in the arm. Okay. So yes. I will not turn to yes, and one of the ways you know if a child has been immunized is to check for the BCG scan. The name of the vaccine is BCG. That's the one you give on day one before the baby leaves the hospital. Yes. No, so, this uh, USB. Yes, I can see it. You have it. No, that USB yeah. adapter. Where all of us carry it. Uh, hey, everybody get it. Everybody, from. yes. Hello, Doc. With Frank Donga. Hello, Doc. With Frank Donga. You're listening to Hello, Doc. With Frank Donga. So you, you can. That's one we'll be checking if a child has been immunized. BCG. Yeah, I've drunk that. Yes. Yeah. So at birth, we give BCG. We give in Nigeria here. We give OPV. OPV is oral polio vaccine. Hmm. And we also give hepatitis B at birth. Then it doesn't end there. That's within the first as the child is week, born. Or as the child is born. Okay, yeah, within before the child leaves the hospital at birth. The first few days. Yes, at birth, as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Yes. Those, so that's one, those three prevent uh, for against uh, um, tuberculosis, tuberculosis, polio, polio and um, hepatitis and B. Hepatitis B. Then six weeks, the child is just come back and then take another set of vaccines. So in Nigeria here, we give um, there's something we call penta penta. If you know if you did your maths, penta mm. means five. five. So there are five vaccines in one. Um, we have the one, it contains um diphtheria, the one against diphtheria, uh, pertussis, we think of, and um, tetanus, mm. then hemophilus influenza type B, and um, hepatitis B. That's the penta. Then we also give OPV again, OPV, another set of OPV. So then we give um what they call pneumococcal vaccine. That one protects the child against um, um, there's a bacteria pneumococcus that causes mm. pneumonia. 
to give their child. Um, in Nigeria, yeah, we can also give rotavirus. Rotavirus is one of um, causes diarrhea in children. However, it's um you have to pay for rotavirus, but the others are free. Oh, all the other also all these vaccines you have been saying, those yes. first three ones um, they are yeah, free. Yeah, they are they're free. They're very ah. free because we want our people to be well. We'll talk about that. Why I'm sure I'll tell you why it has to be free because we don't want someone to say like I couldn't afford it, and so no, I won't give my child because when a child is not immunized, it affects another child. Mm. We'll, we'll go we'll go into that. So at six weeks you give that. At ten weeks you come again for those ones you give at six weeks again you give it again. That's the penta the um, pneumococcal and if you give rotavirus you give it again mm. 14 weeks is the same thing too that you give mm-hmm. just that you don't give you don't give pcv again pcv is just twice that pneumococcal vaccine is just twice yeah. so so i'm glad you said because another thing is um the cost of some of these things. I wanted mm-hmm. to say any hey, people will be But I'm not I'm not finished though. Okay. After, <laughs> after 14 now. weeks Six months, a child is supposed to come back and take vitamin A. Very important. Vitamin A protects against measles. It helps to relieve if a child has measles. It can reduce how severe measles is. And it's just good for the child's well-being, mm-hmm. vitamin A. Then at nine months, we now give the vaccine against measles and yellow fever. We wait until nine months because um, we believe that, okay, when a child is born, the mom also, the mother, breast milk and some antibodies also pass from the mother to the child to protect the child. Mm. And it's still circulating in the body. So we want those antibodies to go first. That, so measles is one of those, um, measles vac- um, antibodies, one of those antibodies that still circulates in the body. Mm. So we want it to go completely and then we'll now give the one. Yes, yeah, so nine months. The message I want people to get is that immunizations are important. Okay. You might not go to the hospital. When your child is born, go to the hospital and they would let you know what your child needs per time and per age and what you need. So ask about immunization. It's ask about ask immunization. About, Always ask questions. Ask about immunization. So what immunization, what, what routine immunization do adults now? Maybe somebody that is about in their 30s or 40s or 50s. Mm. Is there any immunization for those kind of people routinely? Okay, yes. No, yes. It depends. But that, at, at that age, it depends on um, your situation in life. Mm. It depends on if you are traveling. So there's something called travel medicine. And um, there are some regions in the world you are traveling to that you need to take certain vaccines because of the diseases that are prevalent there. So it all depends on you and your individual risk and your life circumstance. Mm. So um, if, if, if you're worried about your health, just go to meet a health professional and they'll advise you more on what you need. Per time and person. Are there vaccines that are meant for women alone or men alone? Or everybody can take any, collect any kind of vaccine? Everybody can collect any um, kind of vaccine. The one I was going to say was for women is HPV, human papilloma virus. Can I take it? Yes, because, okay, so that's another gist. <laughs> because um, human papilloma um, virus protects against cervical cancer. It is women that have cervical cancer because they're the ones that have the cervix. Cervix is the neck of the womb. However, the HPV is a virus that is found in the is a sexually transmitted um, infection. It is men that give women that infection. Mm. It is located in the genital areas, even of men, mm. and it can also affect. Even though they don't have cervical cancer, HPV can can lead to throat cancer. So when there is um, I don't want to go okay, into that. Yes, okay. Yeah. So okay. men can also guys can also take HPV mm. vaccine because yeah, no. of that of mm. that. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that that means also to protect the man and the woman. So yes, and the woman, the woman he might meet later, and but it's more, it's very very important for women. But I hope you get the gist. Yes. 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 So yes. so <laughs> as you are consuming the information and other things that you are consuming, mm. you can take vaccine. Yeah, you take good. vaccine. <laughs> like the football we mentioned, mm. you have those defenders always running around on the field of your body mm-hmm. to make sure that if any ball is coming, any ball of disease is coming towards your net. Give it nothing. Block it. Deflect it. Just to keep you healthy. Thank you very much, Dr. Yes. Aniri, for coming on the show. Okay. Uh, we still have a whole lot more to discuss. But you guys, you've heard it. You know, I promise you that my Obunge health expert is a public health expert. She is going to tell us so much about this all immunization. We still have a whole lot more for you in other uh, episodes of this podcast. Don't go anywhere yet. But just in case you have more questions you, you know, bothering you, you want to ask questions, you need clarification, you need maybe the vaccine schedule for your location. You want to ask questions, you want to say something, you want to share an experience. You know what to do now. Send us a message. On our social media handles, you can 
follow us at Nia Campaigns. Use the hashtag Change Creators and can get in touch with us. <laughs> thank you very much, Doctor. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys. It's always a pleasure having you join us on the show. Hello, Doc, with Frank Donga. See you next time. Hello, Doc, with Frank Donga. Hello, Doc, with Frank Donga. <laughs>